I have had and have run my fair share of lasers, but I haven't seen anything like the X Tool D1 by MakeBlock. Let's take a look at what makes this laser different than all the rest. First impressions are always very important, and you can tell that MakeBlock took the time to consider their packaging, and it was a really pleasant experience to unbox this and see how they perfectly machined the foam to fit each and every particular piece for the X tool. Even all the way down to the manual, it's very nicely done, though the company has also provided an instructional video on their official YouTube channel. That is where I went. I'm going to pull up my phone, follow along with their video to get my machine together. It is a nicely done video. It is quite quick. I would recommend that you watch it all the way through one time and then go back and follow along to get your machine together. It comes together quite easily. There's probably only about 16 or so screws that you need to put in. They even provide a Allen wrench here for getting all those pieces in. And everything's machined so well. After getting everything nice and tight, the machine comes together very square. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the power to the machine and here's a little listen to how it sounds. After I get the machine powered up, I was eager to test out the phone application. So I got that installed and was surprised to see that I had no issues with it crashing or anything like that. It seemed pretty stable overall. Now I really do love that I can run the machine through the Wi-Fi and not have to worry about any cables. So it makes it real simple. And if I was doing just a real simple engraving on a box or on a cutting board, I don't even have to pull out my laptop to do something like that. I can just use my phone. So this first test is going to be run with just my phone, and we're going to see an example of what it looks like right here on some Baltic plywood. Straight from the phone, through the Wi-Fi, to the machine, and now lasering onto the piece of wood. Now, anytime you're using a laser inside of an enclosed space, you want to think about how are you going to extract the smoke fumes out from the space that you're working in. Now, since I am just in a garage, I'm just going to open up one of the windows and put a box fan in and have that extract the fumes out of my workspace. Now, even though I am using my phone for the first engraving here, you can also use a laptop and you can use their proprietary software, which is fine and basic and free it comes with the machine but you can also get light burn which I would highly recommend as it is the industry standard and it is really great to see that Xtool has incorporated that software to be useful with their device. Okay that engraving has finished now I'm just gonna take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and wipe off any leftover laser residue and we can see that the laser is doing a fabulous job and getting some really high quality engravings here. All right, now I am running the laser with my laptop using light burn. And here we are engraving on a slate coaster that has been sprayed with lacquer. And on these coasters, I can run it at full speed, which I believe is about 180 millimeters a second. And it only took about four minutes to do this four by four coaster for my friend Adam over at Uncle Sam Metalworks, which not to name drop or anything, but is a Forged in Fire champion and is sending me a billet of his handmade Damascus for a project that I look forward to making. All right, next up we have this stainless steel dog tag and I'm going to be showing you also how easy it is to set the focus with the X tool, all you have to do is line it up over the top of the material that you're going to engrave. You pop out this little tab of metal that holds it in place with some magnets. And then after you have that down, you just loosen the thumb screw on the left side and you lower it down until it touches your material. Then you tighten it up nice and tight and then lift the little metal mechanism back up out of the way. Now here I am on Lightburn, getting it set, making sure it's centered, and then I'm going to send it from the computer. Also, remember to wear your safety glasses with these. You can damage your eye by looking at the brightness of these lasers, even though it is behind that shield. You want to be extra safe. 
On Xtools website, they have recommended speeds and powers. And for the stainless steel, they recommend 10 millimeters a second at full power. So you can see in real time kind of what that speed looks like. Stainless steel does take quite a bit of power and slow speed to really be able to get a high contrast. But I was really impressed to see how dark I was able to get it with the engraving. It did a lot better than any previous lasers that I've used for stainless steel engraving. So here you can see nice solid black up against the, the brightness of that stainless steel. Next up, we're gonna test this little piece of synthetic leather. Now, I thought this would be a good opportunity to make a little identifying keychain for my wife as she's pretty good at misplacing her keys from time to time. Now again, nice dark engravings here and I used their recommended settings from their website for it. And also it was able to cut out with just two quick passes. Here we can see how dark it came out and how nicely it cut out. I put it on my keys. Now I did clean this with the alcohol and I don't recommend using alcohol on synthetic leathers. As you can see, it discolored it. Now next I wanna try out the rotary and I know we need to use these little extender feet to get it raised up high enough so that we can fit the rotary and any cups or round objects underneath the machine. So these just screw in real easy. Here's a look at the rotary device and what I really love about this is it's already calibrated to the machine itself. I didn't have to do any calibration in light burn or anything like that. You can basically just plug in this rotary and it's ready to go. Here's a quick little test and I believe this first one I just used the phone app to get it sent on here. And you can see I was just able to engrave this really simple heart onto this round rolling pin. Now I'm switching over to my laptop and I'm going to use Lightburn to run the rotary and I thought this would be a good chance to test out this cookie school logo that I do for a local business. Now I've probably made over hundreds of these for the company and I normally use my large industrial sized CO2 laser but it's great to see that the X tool is producing just as good of quality as that $5,000 machine does. And you can see how crisp the design comes out right here. And here is what the rolling pins look like after they're cleaned up and oiled. Really professional looking results. Next, we're going to attempt engraving this large painted tumbler. Now we should be able to run this at a pretty quick speed as removing the paint on this surface with a 10 watt diode laser should come off pretty easily. Now the height of this cup is going to require that I use the second legs to get this thing raised up even more. So you're gonna see me putting those on right here. Now with the tapered shape of this cup, I'm just gonna take some wooden shims and place those underneath the rotary so that it is a nice flat level surface where the engraving is gonna happen. To also help keep the cup on the rotary, I just put a <laughs> spray can of shellac to help weigh it down to keep it in place as it rolls over. And it worked perfectly. And here you can see the laser running in real time. And the quality of the engraving, again, is just coming out perfectly. And you can see that with this tool, you could even wrap all the way around the cup and engrave the entire thing. I'm gonna take a little bit of alcohol and wipe it off just to get it cleaned up so you can see how nice of a contrast you get between the black and the stainless steel on this cup. And here is just a metal cup and you can see I slowed down the engraving to get a nice dark high contrast here as well. Now what I'm most excited for is testing out the cutting capabilities of this diode laser. Now I'm just gonna put it inside of my big CO2 laser made by RM Lasers. Now if you are looking at running a full business of laser engraving, you might wanna look into my video showing off what this big machine is capable of, as I think it's well suited for someone looking into doing production in their shop or cutting through very thick materials. And I've placed it in the laser so I can use the smoke extraction that is vented up through my attic. All right, here I've got a test cut set up where it goes from one millimeters a second all the way up to 10 millimeters a second. And we're gonna see what it can do on some different materials. So first we're starting off on some, a little bit over eighth inch thick birch plywood that you can pick up at any big box store. 
Now, one of the things that makes the X-Tool different than any other diode lasers that you can purchase currently is they have combined two 5-watt lasers inside this laser module to combine into a, a really strong, powerful 10-watt beam of light that you're going to see cuts through quite nicely. And this material is 0.1755 inches thick or 4.33 millimeters thick and it's able to cut all the way through on one pass at four millimeters a second and this is without an air assist which now xtool also sells a kit that you can add on to your machine which will give you better cuts and cleaner cuts here is a little laser hack i learned i'm going to spray some watered down borax onto some plywood here I'm going to dry it and then I'm able to run the machine at full speed at a very low power and still get black engravings. This is a photorealistic engraving of something. See if you can guess what it is. I'm also going to use the laser to cut it out and I'm running it at 4 millimeters a second at a single pass. And here is the image I used for the engraving, and you can see how that translates over to the wood here. And of course, this would look much better if we did a larger engraving as well. Now with the borax engravings, it's a good idea to just seal in the borax as it's pretty easy to rub it off if you don't seal it like this. Now at this point, the X tool is running just so flawlessly that I'm just kind of having fun and I'm doing yet another image engraving and I'm just, again, blown away by the fact that this is a diode laser that truly can cut through material without the hassle of many, many passes. This is a single pass, and it cuts out on the first try. Now, with my 90-watt RM laser, I can cut through 3 quarter inch thick oak plywood at 3 millimeters a second. So I just wanted to test out the capabilities of the X-Tool and see how deep it could cut through the same material at one millimeters a second. And here we can see the X-Tool was able to cut 0.312 inches into the three quarter inch oak plywood. Now for the true test, I've got some quarter inch clear acrylic here. Now I've heard that diode lasers really just can't cut through acrylic, especially without an air assist. So I'm going to run the same cut path as before and just see what happens. Now I am sad to say that even at the slowest speed, the laser beam just isn't able to get through the material and not melt it back together. So none of these cut squares make it out. Now I am super curious to see what the air assist would do with acrylic because I think that is probably the key when it comes to cutting with a diode laser on acrylic. Now just for fun I thought we would see how fast we could cut through some cardboard and I believe I have it running at 18 millimeters a second and it's cutting all the way through. Now since the laser is cutting so well, I thought this would be a great opportunity to go ahead and make a storage box for the workshop. And I designed the cut path for this box on a website called MakerCase. Once it was all cut out, I was able to assemble the pieces and put it together and now I have a nice little box. Something else I want to show off about a laser like this is it's so lightweight and it has an open bottom so it doesn't matter how big the material is you're working on, you can just set the entire laser up on top of it like I'm doing here. Now this piece here is a very important piece for a member of the Air Force so I was testing it out on the back side to get my speed just right to get the right darkness before flipping over to the front side to do the true engraving but you can see how clear my logo came out here after a little sandily sand with the five inch palm sander you can see how clear and precise the engraving really comes out now over to the front side of this piece of cypress and you can see the x tool is doing a fabulous job and i was able to get it lined up just perfectly parallel with the bottom edge of that cut and the engravings look just great 
Now the X tool was not around when I first got into laser cutting and engraving, but if it was, this would be the machine that I would recommend to myself. If you think you might be interested in checking out this machine, I'll have links to it down below in the description. And of course, I will keep everyone updated on how the X tool performs in my workshop in the future. And I look forward to adding upgrades to it like the Air Assist. And if you think you might be interested in seeing how that turns out, here's just a little reminder to subscribe to the channel if you think you might wanna see that. I also wanna thank my top supporters on Patreon. That would be Kyle Hickson and Woodland Iron. Thank you for your continued support especially since I haven't put out a video in months. But I am energized and fired up, and I should have more videos coming out very soon. The next video should be out within a week or so, and I hope you all tune in as it will be my first experience with a 3D printer as I review the longer LK5. So I hope you look forward to catching me on that video over there. And until then... I'll catch you on the next one. Oh, I'm just talking to myself, Levi. Are you going to send that to other people? I'll probably put this on YouTube.